All right, this is the point where I'm going to start peppering you with questions, and obviously you've heard these before, but we haven't had a chance to talk with you, Premier Guitar, so we're just going to start with the back. First one uh, being the Fool SG. Uh, obviously you had it for a long time. Was there anything that you did to it to make it more your instrument, or even just had to repair, or just work out for your playing style or tone that you're chasing? Um, I didn't do anything to change the uh, basic tone of the instrument, okay. but when I got it, it was in just incredibly horrible shape. Yeah. Um, I got it from Jackie Lomax, who had been using it as a lap guitar. Um, it had a wooden bridge on it. Didn't have a conventional bridge. It had wow. a wooden bridge that they just stuck on it. Um, the uh, paint job had been pretty battered up, especially the back, because I think Eric wore like belt buckles yeah. sometimes and wore a lot of the paint off the back. Um, the back of the neck down by the head stock was, all of the paint was gone from that. It had been all sweated off over the years, and essentially the wood was almost like balsa wood. It had been, it was all porous and eaten through, and shortly after I got the guitar, the headstock snapped off. So oh. I had to have a new headstock made and grafted onto the end of the guitar. And I had the uh, paint job restored, and uh, the other funny thing was that they never put any sort of sealant on the, the paint. paint job after they did it. Yeah. So it was still sort of tacky in a way, you know, bits of it were flaking off, and it had this weird sort of slightly sticky feel to it. Um, as I recall, there was a matching bass that they made for Jack Bruce, but he stopped playing it fairly early on because they had painted the fingerboard as well. Mm -hmm. And he said it just felt too weird yeah, to play. So I had the paint job restored and then I had it sealed so that it would uh, remain restored. Yeah. And then uh, uh, there may have been some missing knobs. There may have been a knob or two that was missing and we replaced them with just regular knobs. We didn't go to any trouble to find special knobs for it. And then I played it for decades yeah. after that. I owned the guitar longer than anyone else had owned it mm -hmm. and played it for longer than anyone else had played it. Uh, and then in the, in the, again in the, in the late 80s when I was in Japan, uh, a Japanese, I guess he was the luthier, but he, I think he was just more a guy who did finishes. He gave me a replica of it. I was going to ask if, you know, whether it was uh, that time period or again, you know, even recently you said that you were out in the road with Utopia with the big stage show doing the whole kind of discography of your guys' work. I was wondering if you had a replica and kind of used I that to I still do have a replica, that, yeah. yeah. And we call, that that? One, we call that one Sunny and because uh, sunshine of your love. Yeah. Um, and that one does not sound the same. It sounds similar, but I believe that uh, they had taken some of the windings off of the original guitar, taking some of the windings off the pickup to mm -hmm. give it a sharper sound off, out of, off of the bridge pickup. I'm not sure about the, uh, about the neck pickup, but it had a much more, more piercing sound than a stock instrument had, mm. um, which was one difference. Um, what did you like about the original when it became your guitar and you started using it and you got it fixed up, you got a real bridge on it? What did you like about it? Obviously everyone associates that with the well, there was, you know, there, but what, what did you like about it for the stuff you were doing? I think quite obviously there was the history of it. Yeah, um, very important. Uh, also, in the, when I first started playing it, in those days, anything that was a Fender-style guitar ran out at the 20th fret. Mm -hmm. You know, you couldn't get any higher than yeah. that, or at the 19th fret or something like that, Some, somewhere well short of where you could bend a full two octaves on the E. Mm -hmm. So I used that because I could play the full two octaves, yeah. you know, and also without any obstruction once you got up there. That was the great thing about those instruments is the entire neck is accessible, whereas a lot of instruments, as you get towards the top, you've got to reach around yeah. the body of the guitar um, to get to the top frets. So I uh, usually would use it in situations where I might be doing a lot of soloing mm -hmm. and stuff like that, playing up.
near the top of the neck.